to do this repair on that power supply board that we just removed, um, you'll need the capacitor kit, you'll need desolder wick, you'll need solder, a diagonal cutter to remove the excess capacitor leads, and a basic soldering iron. Um, first thing we'll need to do is remove the old capacitors from the board. To do that, you use the desolder wick and your soldering iron. Um, the desolder wick is basically a copper fiber, a little stranded copper, um, with solder flux in it, and it will absorb and suck up the solder as we melt it with the soldering iron. So what we'll do is you just put the solder wick on top, heat it up with the soldering iron, and you'll notice that the solder will get absorbed into the wick, and now you have a clean hole with just the old capacitor's lead. Do the same thing with the second one. And then we should be able to just remove the old capacitor. Just as easy as that. So we'll need to do that with all of the capacitors. These two capacitors, the first two are the same uh, ratings. And so we'll remove those two, and then we'll install the new ones. Um, when you're installing them, if you happen to notice on this board, there's a little circle. One side of the circle has a gray or white uh, dash looking mark on it. That's the negative side. The opposite side has a little plus mark. And if you look on the capacitors, one side is, has a gray stripe with a little negative symbol on it. That is the negative lead on the capacitor. So you just want to put the negative lead into the hole on the negative side, and of course the positive lead to the hole on the positive side. Insert it on the board, flip the board over, and kind of peel back or you know, separate the legs so that it stays in the board. We want to do that same thing with the second capacitor. And after we have those two done, We'll just solder it in place. Take your soldering iron. You want to put the soldering iron on the connection first. Allow it to heat for just a moment. Then you touch your solder to it, and it should melt and flow right around the connection. You don't want to put too much and have a big blob of solder, but you do want to make sure that there is enough. All right, we have the first two replaced. Um, now we'll just take our diagonal cutters and cut the excess of the leads, such as that, and then we'll move to the next two capacitors. The next two are also the same voltage and rating, so we'll just take those off. As you do, you just move up to the next little clear piece of desolder wick where the solder is not. And once you get that, then we remove that capacitor. And then we go to the next one. And when you're uh, replacing capacitors on these power supplies, you do need to make sure that you're using the right capacitors for the repair. Um, they need to be low ESR, which is equivalent series resistance, high ripple current, uh, and high temperature. And if you don't use the correct ones, they will fail very shortly um, and cause additional problems. They could possibly even blow out other components on the power supply board. So we do want to make sure that you're using the right components. If you get the kit that we have, um, you will have the correct parts, the correct sizes, and the correct uh, temperature and ESR ratings for the repair. So it takes all the guesswork out of it. Okay, I'll do the same thing again for the 
second set of capacitors. solder those in place. I can cut your leads off flush to the board. And now we just have one more capacitor to remove. Install the capacitor. And solder it in place. And there we are, a fully rebuilt power supply board ready to put back into the unit and test. Now on this particular model monitor, the L226WTQBP, uh, there is two power supply boards. Um, they do fail with the same problem with the capacitors, but the capacitors do vary a little bit. Um, both kits are available on our site. Um, if you click the link to one kit, It'll have a picture of the board. You need to compare it with the board that's in your monitor to make sure that it is the right capacitors. If not, right underneath the link to order it, it has the link to click on to take you to the other monitor board. I said just verify that you have the right board in your monitor to get the right components. So now we'll take it back over to the monitor, connect it back up, and make sure that we are ready to go.